Michelle. And thank you, squad, for joining us once again. You know, this show today is all about you. You sent your questions, your thoughts, and we're going to answer them the best way we can today. This is my uh, guest panel. Most of them you know, but we have somebody new. But we're going to start from this end, and we're going to work our way on down. What's up? Hola, boys and girls. I'm Montina. <laughs> Uh, hello, I'm Kimberly Thomas. I'm Ken Ward. Andre Caesar. Yes, and wait a minute. <clears throat> Kim, that is quite a nice shirt you have. I love the shirt. This is the, like the best shirt I've ever owned. Yes. It is uh, hashtag, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. With Mimi Michelle. Mimi and, Michelle. Um, thank you, Incredible Screen Printing, for always hooking me up and doing quality shirts for me. If y'all want y'all shirt, inbox me. I do take the cash out. And if you're in town, it's 20 hot dollars. If you're out of town, it's 20 hot dollars plus five dollars for shipping and handling. All right, the drink. What'd you say? Mark had a shirt. Oh, wait a minute, Mark did have a shirt. He was on the five. Those the Father's Day gift. Shout out to Mark Lane. <laughs> yes, yes. So let me tell y'all about this drink of the day. Oh my God, wait a minute. Let's come on, Kim. Let's see. Let's see. Mm. In honor of Mr. Vincent Davis, <laughs> I made the side call with a twist. It's got some brandy in it, and let's just say, Puff got a new Ciroc out. It's the brandy. He ain't paying me nothing for this. And we also going to taste it straight to see if it's good to give us a little feedback. Drink. We, we will. <laughs> 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 tell, me, tell me what it tastes like. Tell me what it tastes it's like. All right. I tried it. It's, it's good. good. It's smooth. Get, come, give me your, your review on that. Nice. It's got a good finish to it. Nice cigar bird. Mm -hmm. Cigar, yeah. I can, I all right, all right. That. Uh, uh, if you go on with that and Hennessy, which one would you choose? Crown. So, I got the Ciroc brandy in here. I have the um, the orange liqueur in here with a splash of lemon. And then I added a little ginger and apple in there, too. To give it a little, you know, Mimi twist. So today, is the topic is, because you asked. And the first question we have, since we had Father's Day last week, they wanted to finish with that, so. Yes, yes, indeed, we have it every week. Yeah. It's always one. I tried to give her a hand. I mean, she got sick. Put that down. Uh -huh. Oh, my Lord. So, I don't know what happened. The first question is, what is, is the importance of a father's presence? <clears throat> Tell me what y'all think. Mm. I think it's very important. It's just as important as a mother's present. Kids need two parents, you know what I mean? But unfortunately, in the day and age that we live in, uh, <laughs> sometimes, you know, it's a bit more special than most. But I think father's presence is, helps shape a, a young lady, who she's going to date, how she's going to date, how she's going to be treated, uh, how she's going to allow somebody to treat her. Um, yeah. Girls need their daddies. Boys need they them too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about you, Cammie? I think that um, the father's presence is irreplaceable. Um, there's nothing that can take that or substitute for that. And quiet as it's kept, um, those families that have do not have dads or role models that are fathers, Long later on in life, they still long for that. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're 30, 40, 50, there's still a yep. void there. So that's just how important fathers are to uh, the homes, the, the families. That's uh, very important. Which I think. I agree. I think, you know, father is very important. You know, I grew up in a single family home, and, you know, I had a lot of male figures in my life outside of my home, like mm -hmm. my basketball coach. Mm -hmm. We my grandfather. That. Yeah, we talked about know, that. Dads, I think, help shape kids' self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when when dad is not present or a father figure is not present, I think later on in life we all kind of suffer from some yeah. self-esteem. Wow. Yeah. Show right about it. Come on, Dre. Uh, Come on, knowledge. I, I think first and foremost, you know, God created a man to lead, right? Mm -hmm. exactly. Not just with his with his woman or his wife, but his family. You know, um, I, I was raised in a two-parent home. My father was very pitiful in my life. Uh, he used to always make a statement, takes a man to raise a man, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and he uh, he was one of the best in the game. Being a father of all daughters, though, you know, I think, you know, 
you have to really embrace that role of being the first man they fall in love with. Mm-hmm. You, know, better believe you, you kind of sculpt the development of their queendom. Mm-hmm. You know, Come on and if you, don't, you know, and if you do that properly, uh, you don't have to worry about them when they go outside the front mm-hmm. door. Absolutely. You know, mm-hmm. they'll be well prepared. So y'all both have daughters, right? Mm-hmm. Did y'all take y'all daughters on their first date to see how they should be treated by a man, or just kind of guided them in that direction? Oh, absolutely. I mean, my daughter did a daddy daughter dance. I think when she was about nine years old. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I wanted, I always wanted myself to be the first encounter she had. Amen. You know, as, with another male figure. Uh, you know, just opening the door for her, just doing little things. Yeah. And just setting her expectations high. high you absolutely. know, so when she goes out into this world, she she already know kind of what to expect and how yes, she wants indeed. to be treated. I, I always cut corners with my daughters from the times they was in car seats and boosted chairs. Mm-hmm. I load them up and we rolling. So we go into the barber shop. I'm going to play dominoes. I got my diaper bag. I got yeah, pull ups. Yeah. I got mm-hmm. nooks. I got formula. I got all that. My daughters roll with me. So that's been since day one. They formed my best friends. Mm-hmm. But when they started dating, all the dates started in the living room. I know that's right. Yeah, they like, you know, you, you get old enough to date and you just take out somebody's car. Your yeah, first couple of yourself. months of, No, no. They, your first couple of months of date in the living room with the family. You dating the family. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, you know, we watching TV. We watching sports. We cooking. We, mm-hmm. we, we, I need to know you. Her sisters need to know you. Her mm-hmm. mom, Absolutely. We, 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 we all going to be in this. Doc. Yes, you know what I'm saying? You got to pass a calculus mm-hmm. test. Yes, I mean, dude, dude, In his yes, living room. Dude. Right. In his right. living room first, yeah. Okay. Their second question was parenting. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Y'all go. Because I don't have any children. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. Mm-hmm. Man. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, my for my experience, I'm a single parent. I've all I've never been married, so I have I have a daughter, and I thought that uh, raising her young was gonna be was the most difficult part. Mm-hmm. Actually, I can go back to that tomorrow, today, <laughs> because now it's you have an adult, yes. and you've made mis- I've made mistakes. I've so done things the wrong are. way, mm-hmm. and you we cannot. Stop mm-hmm. them from going in that direction. So no you have to learn you. to take your hands off. And when I tell you it is, it's nothing but Jesus <laughs> <laughs> that keeps my mouth closed take sometimes. Yeah. Because you have to step back. And that's the hardest thing to watch your child moving in a direction. But you can't, you got to, you got to let them do it. You yeah. got to let them do it mm-hmm. themselves. And that's the hardest thing about parenting for me. To, no. to see the mistake coming and you yes. know it's a mistake. You don't but listen. you have to allow it to happen. No. Yes. You gotta, especially yes. when they grow, you gotta allow it to happen. Yes. You know, yes. That's, much. that's so hard. So I have a teenage boy. Mm. Mm. Please pray for me. <laughs> I, I, I've never prayed so much in all, in all my life. He just turned 18, he's driving. Like you, when he was little, that was my ace. It's, they know everything. Yeah, can't tell um, him nothing. No, you can't tell him nothing. Mm-hmm. Not, nothing. Mm-hmm. I hope he's watching. You can't tell him <laughs> nothing. <laughs> um, but I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. <clears throat> Being a parent, it makes you a selfless person. Yeah. Before I had him, I was selfish. All I thought about was myself, my dreams, my goals, my aspirations. Then you realize, once you become a parent, Everything you can't do everything just for you. It's about someone else. Right. Yeah. Um. So, man, it's a it's a blessing. What's the ugly? Man, let me tell you about the ugly. <laughs> that attitude. <laughs> yes. 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 And see, you yes. see, you see, you know, I used to be able to. Say, it don't work no more. Mm-mm. It's it's he look. He's in the transition from, from being right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So, and <laughs> just pray. Yeah. Pray for me. It used to be what was the lady's name in, in the choir who would say, "Pray for parents." Yeah, and I would just laugh, but I know exactly what. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. this, this by far, uh, has been the hardest part of the parenting the is like years. the teenage years, yeah. mm-hmm. the transition from a boy to a man, letting oh. him go, knowing he'll be going to college soon. Every time he walks out the door with the keys in his hand, you worry. I worry. Right. Number one, because I know um, I'm, I live in America. And I know what they what can happen to young black boys. Let's so, just say he he looks grown. He's six five. He's been six five a long time. Mm-hmm. Oh, no been getting hit head. on since he was fourteen by grown women. Mm-hmm. Oh, and man. now his swag has caught up with his height, mm-hmm. and he think he is the best next thing since sliced white bread. Yeah, they would hit on him in front of me though. 
Like, oh, your brother so fine. And I'm like, girl. <laughs> hold me back, Jesus. Hold me back. But I mean, good, bad, and ugly, I, I wouldn't change anything, you know, any of it, man. It's, it's a blessing. What about y'all? I think she hit it on the head when you said, you know, you just got to pray. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you and you brought girl. up another good point. You know, being, I was probably selfish too before I had kids. Mm-hmm. And kids, man, make you really selfless. They mm-hmm. do. Because, you know, constantly I'm always kind of putting my kids, you know, up ahead of me, which is rightfully so. Right. But, I mean, I wouldn't do it any other way. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do it any other way. And I think. When you alluded to the ugly part, I don't know if it's ugly. Good you know, just having ugly. a just having a black male mm. teenage son growing yes. up during this day and time. Yes. My mm. son is fourteen years old. He's six four. Yeah. Yes. So you know, I have to constantly tell him, "Hey, son, you go outside of the house. You got to keep, you know, keep off your pants up. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Almost don't turn your hat to the back. Yes. Don't wear a do rag. Right. Right. It's oh almost God. like I got to coach him on how he needs to better. Yeah. You yeah. know, for yeah. society. And that's so sad because. They just trying to find themselves in their hairstyles and their fashion. Right. Yeah. And it's life threatening to wear a hoodie. Right. It's life threatening to wear your cap to the back. It's life threatening. I mean, first of all, that pants sagging, that, that ain't cute. I'd be so glad when I, the I tight ass skinny that. jeans past your ass is gone. I don't let that, that, that doesn't happen. When, I, when my girls, uh, they've had, we, when they were young, we have birthday parties, house parties, and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Fellas, get to the front door, dog. You gotta pull them up. Mm-hmm. I'm the only Negro show with draws in this house. Yep. <laughs> pull them jokes up. We, we're, not, we're not doing that. Mm-hmm. And, and and we shut even at my barber shop. We don't let youngsters come to the barber shop. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know. But for me, with girls, the good is, uh, in my opinion, there's no more precious gift than a daddy's baby girl. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and I and I think I was gifted with girls, all girls, for a reason. Um, but there's hey, no man. greater gift. But, but I've heard that a few times. But uh, the thing about it, is, the 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 ugly is the heartbreak. Mm. So so just like you, the first man they fall in love with, when your when your baby girl, and I call them all baby girl. Yeah. I call them all baby girl. When your when your baby girl. Get her heart broke. No, when she breaks your heart. Oh. As a father, as a father, you love your daughter so hard. There's gonna be that moment in time in life where, where things are gonna be yeah. happening, and it's it's gonna break your heart. Yeah. It's coming. Yes. That's the ugly of it, because it it stings. Yes, wow. it it stings. Yes. And, and but you know that it's still part of the process. Yeah, it's still part of the process because it's going to separate for a minute, then it's going to grow back together. It's it's still all good. It's, it's got to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's part of the growth, the circle. I don't you know? have kids, but, but let me just say, I used to be like, oh, I wish I could have had mm-hmm. kids, because you know the doctor always told me that it would be really hard for me. Or slim to none that I would have kids. I'm 46, so I'm a little past that line. But um, but you still practice. You still got time. Oh, but, still oh yeah, practice is in business. You get your rest in. That's 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 <laughs> you didn't tell me that. Oh, yeah, we're going to have a whole okay. segment on sex. So if yeah. y'all want to be on the panel, let's get it in because I'm sick of the taboo. <laughs> sex is great. <laughs> but back to business at hand. Um, watching him as a teenager, because I've loved him so I was there when, he, when she had him, and everybody knows that. That is my built in birth control. I don't know. I used to, uh, I just like the stuff he do sometimes. Like last week, he was supposed to be the cameraman. If you listen, I'm sure going in on you, bro. He's not. He I just don't want to do nothing. You tell him, and Lord, they keep telling me that this too shall pass. So I'm trying to lean on Jesus, Jesus on that. But Jesus. that heartbreak that you talked about, even with um, <laughs> daughter and. Mom, yeah. you still because you have these expectations, and I love my baby. I love my. You're wonderful, Gabby. Don't you? You're wonderful, um, and there's no but to that. Mm-hmm. There are going to be times when you have a heartbreak, though, mm-hmm. but you have to be very prayerful and patient because there's nothing more important than that bond. Amen. Amen. So Amen. I don't care what she ever does or what I do, that bond will never Amen. go away. And even if it does, you have to work at getting that back. You gotta work on it. There's nothing more important yeah. than that. Yeah. So kids, we love y'all. Get y'all act together though. That's Cause right. I'm punching, I'm punching Negroes in the face. <laughs>
Oh I'm just saying. Hashtag that. Praise God for the good. <laughs> okay, the next question we had. The struggle of not always saying exactly what's on your mind. <laughs> oh, do they, oh, before we go to the next question, do they have anything to say? No, we'll definitely take questions. I don't think you they know that we're taking questions. So we, we're today. taking questions. You know, you can you can answer some of the questions that we're asking. I mean, y'all can get on in. Y'all know how we do it. So, y'all ready for this next question? Yes. The struggle of not always saying what's on your mind. Woo! Look at him drinking water. I he think always got that one. No, anybody, the water. anybody who works. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes it's just best to be quiet. Yes. Yeah, right. I think that's, but if you ever been somewhere and you knew you wanted to say something, and then when you got home, you were like, I should have said, I should have said. It's, it's frustrating not to say what's on your mind. So I don't like that question. I don't because like that question. I think we we were raised to always say but what I, was on our mind, and, and <clears throat> we get it. Yeah, I got a lot of trouble with that. But I think the question came from some people don't know how to say like something. Some people don't know how to don't know how to speak what's on their mind. And they get trampled on, they get ran over. Then some I think the, the question has two sides. Some people don't know how to speak their minds. And then some people always speak their mind and they don't know we when don't to zip it. it. Right. Yeah. So, so let me, let's let's talk about both sides of that. So whenever you say what you're, what's on your mind. I believe in saying what's on your mind. I don't believe in backpedaling or I'm telling you that one moment where you feel like, man, I should have said X, Y, Z. Say what's on your it. mind, but always be mindful of what you're saying mm -hmm. because it's not how you say it. It's how it's perceived, right? No, sir. Always. So always, I, I, I tell my son all the time, always walk, talk, think, speak, in, with excellence, right? And integrity. So then, and it, with integrity, and then that way, whatever comes out of your mouth won't be hurtful. Now, sometimes the truth just hurts. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, right. like a wife saying to a husband, "Do I look fat in this dress?" But well, baby, I'm the dress. You still <laughs> don't ask your husband a stupid question like, "Do I look fat in this dress?" He, because he loves you, he's gonna say. Look good to me, or yeah, I'm, still, I'm still gonna get it. Right, <laughs> regardless. Yeah. Right. So don't ask questions you don't want to yeah, get yeah. to. And just always, I just always speak the truth, man. In fact, they have a drink. Always. Going nowhere. Well, for me, for me, I, I come from a management background, so I always had to inter interact with people as my subordinates as well as customers, and I always lived on something called the Think Principle. And it's an acronym that says, what you're saying, is it truthful? Is it helpful? Does it inspire? Is it necessary? And is it kind? Mm. Mm. Come and on so now, that think. goes, that, that that goes oh, that's the next t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm laughs> the think principle. Um, so, and, and I also tell my daughter all the time, do not put expectations on others that it's unfair. Mm. Because you can, through your speech or through your a conversation or your feedback can put an expectation on somebody that's really not fair. Yeah. If someone can't uh, rise to your expectation mm. or if they don't need to rise to your expectation. So you live in your own expectation. Be careful about what you expect others to do. Yeah. What about, come on fellas, because y'all think things different. Come on, give it to us. Yeah, and I think sometimes circumstances dictate uh, how you should respond to certain mm -hmm. things. And the reason I'm saying that because I saw a patient in clinic Thursday. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always talk football. I'm a big Alabama fan, Roll Tide. <laughs> there at Texas A&M. So we were just talking and, um, you know, she was like, well, you know, God uh, created this world and this country and I love Trump. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if my boy, <coughs> them boys need to kneel. And, I coughed on that. You know, being, I'm in a work environment, so I had to really step yeah, back and because I really yeah. wanted to get in on that conversation. Right. With this. But you know, I had to show some. <laughs> <laughs> I had to show a lot of restraint. <laughs> but in doing so, I had to show a lot of restraint. You know, because yes. you know, in that environment, you know, we were always talking. You know, we shouldn't discuss right. religion, right. Exactly. politics, exactly. Exactly. And things like that. But I exactly. left there in the last two days. That's really been bothering me yes. because yes. I feel like that was an opportunity for yes. a great conversation I could yes. have. I don't know how it would have went. But it's probably good that I didn't kind of right. elaborate on that. I just kind of let them, 
you know, speak their opinion. I right. just kind of nodded and moved on. Yeah, when it comes to politics, I kind of I kind of pass upon it a lot in the workplace as well. My biggest thing is uh, talking about the girls again. I've always raised my girls pretty firm and pretty wide open with no filter. We talked about everything, everything. You know, fathers, if you have daughters, make yourself available to talk about everything. You may not want to hear, but you want to hear. Mm -hmm. But in, in the reverse of that is sometimes when when they when they are veering off the course, they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing when they when they screwing up. You know, I go in, right, and uh, and and sometimes by going in, is a little too firm gotcha. for for, for how to receive it from from daddy. Gotcha. You know, and then I put myself in a position where I've got to go back and and I got to apologize, which which I take no shame in. Yeah. You know, because you you have to show your children that uh, apologies are necessary because you will make mistakes yeah. and how to do it. Right. You know, but but. More so than not, I don't. I don't have a filter. I don't have a. No, you a, do a, not. A, 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 <laughs> I don't ever stop. You know, if it's on my mind now, I, I mean, I, I mean, I give it to you just, just flat out like I'm feeling it. Yeah. But you will understand if it, if it's if it's a it's, if it's a firm response. It may not be how I really want to give it to you. Right. But it'll be firm enough for you to know you struck a nerve or this is where I stand and yes. you need to understand it. These are the boundaries. And don't step over that line, kind of right. deal. So, right. yeah. you know, th th there's a palette for it, you know. But, you know, again, my, you know, my, my parents, old, old school country Louisiana folks. Yeah. My mama from Oakland, my daddy from Eunice. You know, I'm from Lake wow. Charles. You know, you know, hey, hey, boy, if it's on your mind, say it. Don't walk like a crawfish. Hey, you know, like, <laughs> like a crawfish. I am using that. Well, here's my thing. I remember, believe it or not, younger, I was very, very shy, and I never spoke my mind. So when I got to that point where I was like 13, well, 12 going on 13, I had a conversation with myself and I was like, you can't keep living like this. What did that nigga say? She never met her. I never met that nigga. You saw that? I said, what about prom night? You just keep But I was like, if you keep living your life like this, I remember my mom had moved to Houston, her and my sister were here, and I was staying with my grandmother. And I was really, really shy, like, the quietest kid, like, you sure? if, yeah. yeah, and in my yeah. quiet time, like, I really don't talk a lot, believe it or not, so, I was on the airplane when I left St. Louis to come here, and I was like, you cannot be shy when you get there, you cannot, I had a long talk with myself, so, my suggestion to you is, if you're one of those people that don't know how to speak your mind, man, okay, I know the, the Bible says that the tongue is a sword, mm -hmm. but you Wait. have to speak how you feel, because if you don't, People will run over you. Now, I am that person that I'm easy going. If my crew, like, what you want to do? Well, I don't care. We can eat wherever. We can do whatever. And, like, people who are not my friends, they think I'm a pushover. <clears throat> no, contraire, moon frere. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the case. I'm easy I'm going, but I still can get it. I know that. that. I know that. You, it ain't always what you say. It's, it's how, how you say, say it. it. Uh, it's not what you say. It's how you say it. So, Absolutely. speak your mind, but speak it in a way where you're not offensive. You can be firm, but not offensive. Anything out there, Courtney? My, um, the, someone said, the struggle for me comes when I speak my mind to someone who acts like they want the help, but then I speak truthfully, and then they don't act, say, or do, or have the response that they want. Do that I, I want it. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> you know what? Or make me build a wall, and then I'm done. Sometimes people don't really want your advice. They just want a listening ear. They right? just, yeah, they just want to vent. They just want to vent. They want to, and hey, don't keep telling me stuff if you ain't going to change. Just roll. Okay, you, okay. All right. Let's go get these drinks. Let's go to Taco Cabana. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go off the list. I'm going to come back to the list because I got a question today. How do you tell or have to talk with your children about sex? Go. Mine was straight up. Oh, keep it real. Straight right up. Right between the eyes. It was sugar straight coated. up. You want I didn't sugar, yeah. sugar coat it. I didn't beat around the bush about it. In fact, she was like, Mom, Mom, please, no, no. But I wanted her because I grew up in a in a time where you didn't talk about sex. Mm -hmm. You were ashamed of sex. Hell, these kids you, tell you, you more were, than you need to know They now. were learning stuff at, at school that was just so totally backwards and not true. So I wanted to make sure that she and I understood that this is what it is. And yeah. not to be ashamed of it. Not to yeah. be ashamed. That's a part of life. Right. Now, I don't want you to do it to you 45, 50 years yeah. old. But still, <laughs> I want you to know what... what <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Uh, but I want you to know what it's all about. So yeah, it was straight up. It wasn't anything sugar coated about that. I'm gonna tell you a story. Come on, come on, come on talk to it. So so I was 19 when I had my first one, right? Oh, we heard that story. And then my father, I when, when, when my it. daughter was born. She was a preemie, three pounds, four and a half ounces. We go to, my dad meet me at the hospital the next day after she was born. And uh, like I said, my daddy was born in 1929. He old school he was in the country. So he said, uh, he said, boy, look at that girl. You know, and I said, I'm looking at it. He said, no, boy, look at that girl right there. Mm. I said, I'm looking at it. He said, no, boy, look at that girl. I said, I'm looking at it. He said, tell you something right now. Someday, somehow, some way, mm. somebody's son gonna sleep with her. Oh my God! Oh, they have the birth. Now, my baby might be 15 hours old, <laughs> right? So, now when he first started that conversation, I'm looking for a hallmark moment. I'm looking, you know, like, you know, something, you know, real poetic, you know. I'm looking for some Nicky Giovanni kind of thing coming out of Daddy Mark. Like, you no, know, he he just went straight back to Wilfred Caesar. Somehow, some way, someday, somebody, and he, you know, and I'm being kind on how I'm placing this, right? Don't but, be thing about, but he said, he said the difference. Between when it ha between today and when it happens is how you prepare for it. Exactly. All right, you know that's what I'm saying? wonderful. So that's that way you ain't got to kill nobody trying to stop it. Nobody ain't mm -hmm. got to kill you when you're in the hospital. Somebody in right. jail. Mm -hmm. The way you prepare for it is the difference between yes. today and the day it happens. Mm -hmm. Yes, True. best that's advice real. you could have ever given me. Yeah, that's awesome. yeah. Man. yeah. Well, uh, we grew up in an unconventional home. We had a, a, a single parent. You know, mom, mm -hmm. and uh, one particular day, um, <laughs> she lined up some fruits and some veggies, and she she had a brown paper bag, <laughs> and she emptied that thing out on the table, and she put this stuff on sticks, and she said, "This is a condom." I didn't well, get that. Yes, you did. did you I was at the it? same. Too busy worrying about Ronnie's cookies. <laughs> that was probably before Ronnie. She said, "This is a condom." You pinch the tip and roll it down. And she made both of us, you must have been drinking something, uh -uh. pinch the tip and roll those condoms down oh, on yeah. all the different. She said, you put the condom on, it's safer, you know it's on right. She said, always protect yourself. Um, I was scared of sex. There was nothing you could tell me that was going to make it fun. <laughs> I didn't want to touch, it was slimy, why are you making me do me this? Drink. But I was well aware mm -hmm. of how to stay safe. And the one thing I wish we would have had conversations about was like orgasms and mm -hmm. when you I'll have sex out. and it don't happen for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Is this fun? She told her it was for sport. Yeah. She told me to be sick. Oh, yeah. Dude, we had two different we conversations. Two, two totally, two totally so different conversations. I, I became a parent. I was like, look, bro, I can't stop you from having sex. I can prepare you. By the way, my mom had already <laughs> taken... The, she had already given them the conversation before the brown paper bag. Get to him, the brown paper bag. He was trying bag. them on. She would have at our house a drawer. Yeah. With condoms in them. Not saying you have permission to have sex. But if you do, but if you, you be do, safe. be safe. And there was a thing where if the if the bag becomes empty, I ask the no drawer. questions. I just refill it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because she worked in drug rehab. And they had the condoms on hand because. there. Mm -hmm. So she would bring the condoms home, and she was like, if this drawer gets empty, I was supplying the hood. Hey, hey, we we, we don't need you to get hip and dip and flit vitamins. We don't need you to have a kickstand <laughs> on your vagina. We don't need you to be leaking. So I'm going to need you. Do you yeah. need something out of this drawer? That's mm -hmm. when AIDS was, it really, really became big. Like a big deal. Like, yeah. you know, people were afraid. Yeah, the late 80s. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it, I was too young to even understand what sex was. Like, it was scary to have her put that stuff in the semi -con, But I'm aware. How did you tell your daughter? Um, we actually just had the conversation. I flat out told her. We talked about bodily parts. We talked about personal hygiene. We talked about, you know, the differences between what guys want and what they don't want and when you should and when you shouldn't. Um, there wasn't a question that she would ask me that I would not answer for her, even today. Because just because she's older now does not mean that there's still not questions. Right. right. Uh, you were talking about orgasms. I didn't even know what an orgasm was until I was like... <laughs> But if I'm like, That's that old school. You be like, How much well, I am so sorry. You know, but honestly, oh, I, did not, I did not understand. We didn't have that conversation. Oh, <laughs> but, 
said, God damn shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, just, it must be, but, but I'm being honest if about you it. Go, I, go didn't go I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. She didn't have that conversation. No. With, my mom didn't have that conversation no. with, okay, this is what's no. going to happen. And I, like the first time I experienced it, I was in my 20s and I, <laughs> I, thought, I, I, I thought my leg was broke. <laughs> since my children were young yeah. because in school when you raising children today things are happening so much faster Fast the information is so much more social available media. Mm -hmm. social media giving uh, truths are so twisted uh, these days so I talked to my girls from day one two, two of my four daughters came to me when they wanted to get on birth control mm -hmm. you know yeah. what I'm saying and I'm, and I'm open for that mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying because I gave them the Lord of land but it's no I mean um, fifth sixth grade they get they they getting the, they getting the yeah, four one one. When you, when you coming home telling me not. about so and so was in the bathroom doing this that and other got caught right, today. Right. Oh, oh, right. oh, oh, right. yeah, oh, they doing to, that thing. It's time to have figure out. Right. And these kids, they think just because it's not vaginal that they not having sex. They having sex. Let me mm -hmm. tell you something about my nephew. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to tell him jack. I was at the salon one day. I had. Two clients there. <laughs> and he gonna tell, he was five, he was four or five. He, he was like, five. he was like, hey, let me tell you something. You see what so it was one of those workout magazines she had on the bra and pants. You see what she got on? You need to wear that for your husband if you want to keep him happy. Now mind you, he was up late at night watching Showtime after dark. Mm -hmm. That's where he learned his stuff. Yeah. Unbeknownst to me. Unbeknownst to all of us. So he was like, this conversation ain't for you, so you're going to have to go because you're not married. And I feel sorry for you because all the good men are dead in jail. I was oh, done. Goodness. I was done. My goose was cooked. Oh, my weed didn't move. So I was, he was like, yeah, you need to wear that and you need to kiss him like this. So you better talk to your kids because now porn is free. We used to have to pay for porn when we was growing up, and I wasn't into that. I was, I was like, oh, you said we. <laughs> I'm not say that was inclusive. Back then, you wonder why your com computer runs slow? Because they are self-pleasuring with your computer. You might not want to touch the control alt delete button all at once because it's sticky. All right. Now. You didn't even ask that man right there. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead, Ken. No. I'm sorry. Because you're not getting wrapped up in sex. No, I think Dre hit it on the head. You know, you always want to be have you make sure your kids know that they can have, always have open dialogue. Mm -hmm. yes. You want them to always feel comfortable mm -hmm. where they can come talk to you. Mm -hmm. But his girls to come to him when they yes. want to her, that says a lot yeah. 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 without even saying anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, and I had to talk with my kids at an early age. I didn't cut no corners. Mm -hmm. I didn't sugarcoat it. We didn't, we didn't title it the birds and the bees. Come on, I did it ain't. The birds, baby, don't come in the stock. Yeah, yeah we talk like they yeah. talk in school. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, my mama even talk like we talked in school. She was like, hey, she let, let, me, let me tell you something. You believe me? Okay, look. That means you can have a baby. Right. Now, you, you, think that, you think that boy like you? He don't love you like you think you do because sex ain't love. It's a sport. 
And if you want to have sex with him, you better shield your feelings. So yeah, I, you, I don't, I don't love him. Yes, you do, because all y'all do is argue. She broke me down. She, she was like, so um, let me just say, if, if you're going to have sex with him, cut your emotions off. But well, that was a bad conversation. It was good at that. the same time, but it was bad. Because I, I was like, for a long time, I was like an athlete. I mean, same <laughs> guy. I wasn't sleeping around, but I just didn't have no feeling with it. I was like, I'm sweating, you sweating. <laughs> One more again. Let's get this party going. You're so special. I am special <laughs> education. Don't hurt me. Turn to my head and not to my heart. Oh, All right, Next so. question, please. <laughs> King of nutrition, she kind of the queen of nutrition. So eating for comfort. <clears throat> do you eat for comfort? Oh, well, I think we all eat for comfort. I, really? Me and you? Me and you? Eat for comfort? I mean, I think. I think on occasion I've had. What? Because I think y'all see comfort as different than than me and than, than come on let's see. break that down yeah, your, yeah. your comfort has emotions tied to it there we go that's our comfort about. is i got a craving for something i just got something. a craving yeah. for see, something when, women eat for when a woman eat for comfort they angry oh, they, they, they mad at yes. us they, they yes. hurt yes. You know what I'm well i don't have no answers <laughs> but i can get some groceries you know what I'm saying? And it's usually it's like a, ice cream. Yes, yeah, yeah. emotional or tie. Or cookie yeah. or chocolate. Yeah. Something that ain't good for them. Yeah. Y'all just like eat some moment. crawfish. You gonna you know go eat some. Matter of fact, where's my kale salad, man? Yeah, I got you. I'm still waiting on my kale salad. Okay. She said it was good, you. and I am a kale fanatic. You you like I love kale. dinosaur yeah. kale, okay. regular Sorry, kale. Sorry, guys. Kale. We had a personal kale. moment. But um, so okay. men do eat for comfort, just differently than women. Y'all. That's not comfort, though. Yeah, we eat cravings. That's we just, cravings. Just craving for something. So, guys That's eat for hard. comfort, and women eat. No, the girls eat for comfort, and guys eat for craving. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. That's one. Do y'all comfort eat? I, I, I don't know. Well, this is no secret because to anybody who's close to me, but like 10 years ago, I had gastric bypass and lost over 128 pounds. And I had to go through some counseling before that because if I had not, I would have continued to do the same cycle, which was the comfort eating. I was eating because I was lonely. I was eating because I was depressed. I was eating because I was worried. So it definitely is a mm. comfort. The, the food became my confidant and my, my boyfriend, my friend, everything. So it took a while for me to realize, okay, I don't need to eat this right now because... I'm not eating it because I'm hungry. I'm eating it because something else is missing. Mm. Yeah. And and that's that's a real struggle. It's a struggle even now I have to put in my mind, why am I putting this in my mouth? Mm. See, I don't eat for comfort. I'm like, I'm, I just, I ain't that girl. I don't know. Mm. I I, 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 I'll get on a roll now. If I start making chocolate chip cookies and I make them from scratch or then I want them hot. Like the hot now <laughs> sign, but um, you see, hot, hot. You know, but um, I ain't that girl. I just, I Tina get Tina fuss at me all the time because I can be in here all day and not eat a thing, and then, <laughs> shut up. and then so I'll cook, I'll and eat. then you take like, me on a date. It's going down. Like, She'll come and make like a like a like a dinosaur plate. Like it'll be like this big and like rising to the top. And I'm like, whoa! Really? If you think I'm gonna have the oh, I just get a salad. Yeah, I'm gonna get a salad, and I want that burger. I eat. I run the hills, but I'm gonna eat. So I. Mm. That's about the girl. Are you addicted to busy? Let's go to the next question. You no. Oh, I see. So uh, the camera lady, right? Is she, she? No, I, in a bad way. In a bad way. In a bad way. Do you feel like if you're not I doing can't something, sit still. Yeah. you ask you ask my wife and my kids, I said, "Daddy, you always want to go. You always doing something. I I can't sit still. I get I I went this morning. I got up. I went and did the uh, the uh, the Juneteenth parade in Fourth Ward. Mm -hmm. Had to go run a couple of errands. I went home. I kept the grandbaby for an hour and a half. I'm here, and then. 
tonight, the bros, we got some things we're going to do. That's you know what I'm saying? You know, we just, you know, but that's a norm for me. I, I can't sit still. My mind is always working to what do about something. Y'all? I'm so goal oriented that I, what I am addicted to is like I won't stop until it's done. Like okay. if I have like a project, it's, it it almost will like I I can't stop. I don't know how, but I'm not addicted to busy. Like hey, I can watch Westworld all two seasons, pick up and be like woo, <laughs> you know. But if I'm doing something like I'm camera lady, you got something to say about being addicted to busy. I think it's just a vice, just like, you know, food or anything else. You yeah. find something that you either are comfortable with or you like doing or it's your niche. And or if you've been doing it all your life, right, right. then it just becomes the norm. So then you just get used to finding something to do. It's the hardest thing to be off these two days. And it's really, that's normal. So yeah, yeah. But just to sit, I'm not going to wash clothes. I'm not going to go to the grocery store today. Or there are some emails I can check. There's something to not do it. Yeah. It's seriously hard because you're used to always being active. I think people who are, if you want to call it addicted to busy, that's fine. But it's the hustle. It's the grind. And if you don't hustle and grind, it don't get done. Right. And people want your shine, but they don't know your grind. Yeah. They want your glory, but they don't know your story. They don't know you start from sun up to sundown. They don't know that you, like, this don't happen by osmosis. You know, you got to promote. You got to be online 25-8. You got to put yourself out there if you want things to come to fruition. So... I don't think that's addicted to busy, though. I, I think that's a work ethic. It's a work right. ethic, You know what right. I mean? But so that's what I'm trying to say. Some people are addicted to busy, like, just doing stuff that means nothing all yeah. day long just for the sake of moving around. Get but when you have people. a goal that you're you're mm-hmm. trying to attain, that's totally different. For me, be, coming from corporate America and now being self-employed, it it's definitely a different hustle. It, um, oh, yeah. So... I can remember when I was in corporate America, you know, I got off at 6.30, 7 o'clock, it's done. But now that I'm a realtor and I know if I don't move, I don't eat. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. I find myself sleeping with the phone or, you know, first thing in the morning, I am on the phone or I'm, I'm my, I am busy. Even if I try to sit and watch a show in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, did I get that client, that client, that client? But I don't think it's an addiction. It's because I want to perform with excellence, first of all. And then I know if I don't, I won't get paid. Come on, so yeah, it's right. it's better. It's more than not being busy. It's so about performing with excellence. Yeah, yeah. So what, what y'all different. think? Because uh, I skipped y'all. I struggle. Last, with, I struggle with relaxing. Uh, you my, do? my wife always telling me I'm doing something. Like I, I'm never in the bed past seven o'clock a.m. Mm-hmm. Okay. I feel like the sunlight is coming through the window. I was going to the taping. I thought you was. I'm missing. My, I'm missing out on the whole day. So I'm always doing stuff and got projects going on and, and these are mostly things of interest mm-hmm. yeah. I'm like you too yeah I'm goal oriented and you know if there's a goal I need to reach I'll do whatever it takes to get there mm-hmm. but I'm just talking about just things that I just enjoy doing like just hobbies and things like that because the bible say rise up early and settle late right right that's what the words say can I share something that I I, I read on um with Facebook the number 86,400 and that's the number of seconds in a day. Mm, okay. So every morning you get a brand new account with 86,400 seconds mm. in it. How much are you going to waste? Mm. How much are you going to be productive with that 84, 86,400? So when I find myself being complacent or worrying about something or, or not valuing that 86,400, <clears throat> I go back to thank, thank you, Lord, for giving me another 86400 yeah. well, And make sure it's productive each and every second. Let me ask you a question. What if God is making you sit still? Mm. Who mm. Really had to go there? Mm. Because let's just be real. Sometimes, he, sometimes he's just making you sit still. Yes. I mean, later on we'll talk about this right now. But sometimes it's nothing, no matter what you try to do, no matter what you want to do, no matter where you want to go. He shut it down. He, he just... Everything. Three years. Three years of my life was shut down. I couldn't find a job. I couldn't get back into my same profession. 
he just shut it down. Doors are closed. But I realized that he had to remove those things from me yeah. so that he could have more of me. So you could see him. So I could see him. Yeah, that he sure. became the most important exactly. thing. That I that he removed that addiction of that person <coughs> And so my life became mm. more productive in another way. So you're absolutely right. There yeah. are times when that 86,400 needs to just be for him. to him and nobody else. Yeah. What about you, Dre? Well, you know, she, she touched on 86,400. You know, I had a, I had a brother-in-law who, who phrased it another way. Um, life from day one to day end is is a compilation of moments. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Millions yes. and millions of moments. Yes. Right? So, so in that 86,400 seconds within a given day, how many moments, meaningful moments, will yes. you have in that day? Because when your last day is here, your last day is here. Right. And I think for me... Uh, you know, my brother-in-law shared that with me. Chili Bill, shout out to Chili Bill. Hey, Chili Bill. Uh, uh, Tony. Maybe, maybe 20 years ago. That was just his way of embracing the fabric of family, right? When we all come together, man, these are moments. Man, these are wonderful things. Whatever. And I think for me, I'm just always um, maybe chasing a moment. I, You know, I can't relax. I try relaxing and can't. Even when my body is in my recliner, my feet are up. I got a crown on the table. You know, my mind is busy thinking like I can do this, I can do that, you know what I'm saying? I you know I can go I can put another fuel line on this pressure wash, I can go get my truck wash, I can, you know, I mean let me go throw some fish on the grill. Just I say stupid, but it's not really stupid, it's just that I I just I don't know how to shut down almost to a fault. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Almost to a fault. You know, and uh, I, I would like to have that switch. I just don't have it yet. You I, think, I think, and then I'm like, Courtney, do we have any comments or questions? Mm-hmm. Nothing? No, they I, I, don't think I, I don't think I get in a deep enough sleep. They ain't saying nothing. It could be closed. that you need an air purifier and a better mattress. No, oh, no, no I'm, being, yeah. I'm being completely. I keep saying I'm investing that. Air you need an air purifier. Oh, really? And, mm-hmm. Yes. You need an air purifier and you need a better mattress. You need a mattress that's specifically made for your body right. that you because we people look at mattresses like this but it's about the curvature of the body yeah. right? and then you need complete darkness when you are in your room no light to no come light. in no yes mm-hmm. yeah, I believe in that yes you have to have moments of you have to have moments of good sleep that's how the body heals itself that's how your mind that's, that's how you get centered again yeah. outside of prayer because we can't run 24 right, 7. Right. You know, mm-hmm. you run a car and you never turn it off. It's going to break down sooner or later. Right. So you have to find you time. Your phone. You reboot your computer? You have to find time to do a reboot. Like, take a vacation with you and your wife where y'all just lay in the sun all day mm-hmm. and drink whatever you Crown. want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I know also, <clears throat> and this would be a whole other topic at some point, but um, I was diagnosed with a, a mental condition that makes me to where I can't if if I'm in that phase of it I can't okay so let me just say I've been diagnosed with being bipolar type 1 okay so there are times when I can be extremely depressed or there are times when I am off the chart Mm -hmm. and when I'm on the off the chart part I can't sleep that's when that busyness happens and but I I I am able now to identify that and I'm obedient when it comes to medication and that sort of thing and I'm not ashamed. I hope that if there's somebody out there that suffers with that hey, that you now. understand yeah. that it is real and it, it, it happens and it doesn't make you a alien or a bad person. You're no. not defective. I'm still just as wonderful as God made me. I just happen to have that part of right. my brain that doesn't function the right way. And I think that's big in the black community because that was on the list. Mental health in the black community. Mm. And it's something that's a taboo that we yes. don't discuss. Yes. Right. Depression, yes. suicide, bipolarism. Yes. And there was a saying in black households, what happens in this house stays yes. in this yes. house. Yes. And that's why Uncle So-and-so could touch your niece or your nephew and it never got fixed. Yes. Yes. Or yes. you had drug addiction and mm-hmm. nobody out there unless it, you could really tell that they was addicted to drugs. It never got fixed. Yes. We as a people, and I'm just going to be accountable for us right yes. now. 
because I don't know what it's like to be Spanish. I don't know what it's like to be Asian. I don't know what it's like to be white. I sure don't got the complexion for the protection. I'm light skinned, but I ain't got it. So, um, we need to. Ain't nothing wrong with therapy, people. No, ain't nothing, nothing wrong with going seeing a counselor. I, I, yeah. And here's the deal: yeah, go both. see you a Christian I mean, counselor. Yeah, yeah. Some, yeah that was true. You know, yeah, yeah, a counselor that. that's gonna yeah. know the word, but gonna also know the 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 um. The, the, the other side of it. Yeah. You know, it's okay to talk to somebody. Go talk to your pastor. It's Go much. talk to your doctor. And, and have you an accountability partner yeah. because life gets hard. Yeah. It's true. Life gets real, real hard. And if you by yourself, that's, we just had two celebrities. And I really don't like to talk about celebrities on my show because I think other there's enough. Us. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, they know it in a mighty way. <laughs> Right there here. is enough uh, content for us as a people to cover other than what happened on TMZ, what happened on Dish Nation. Those both the two of my favorite shows. I love them. Shouts out, two fingers on my hashtag. You know how we do it. Hashtag, I'm just saying. But mental health in the black community is real. Mm -hmm. And if you struggle with somebody... Yeah. Talk to somebody if you if you need somebody to talk to, inbox me, DM me, and I'll give you to her. It'll yeah. be totally discreet. You'll have somebody to talk to, and and don't feel like you're you're. That was the hardest part for me is because I, I was just, like I said, corporate America, uh, branch manager, vice president. You mm -hmm. know, had the image, had the, all that single mom, super mom. You know, got the cake, all that. That's on my chest. And so when I started feeling like I wasn't myself, uh -huh. I, I felt like, okay, I can't tell anybody that I'm not feeling like myself. What, you know, the stigma behind it. But I'm going to tell you, when you finally get a chance to talk to somebody and you get that part fixed, my life was totally different. And so if you do, if you do have that, I, I call me, like she said, get in touch with me. I am not ashamed of it. I am not. I, that's a part of who I am. There is a physical reason why my brain works that way. Yes. That my doctor explained to me is not because I'm crazy. It's because there's some physical things that happen in my brain that are not normal. So don't feel like you can't get help or you shouldn't get help. So what do y'all think about holistic approaches and caring for the body holistically? I, I believe in it. I, yeah. I'm, I'm big on uh, holistic healing. Um, <clears throat> trying to heal the body naturally. Uh, I believe <clears throat> that God, when he created us, he created a perfect machine that if you do, if you take care of it, it will take care of you. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm, believe it or not, like I'm, I'm big on treating my body well. And there have been times when I've abused my, my body mm -hmm. as well. So um, I've, I've traveled a lot. That messes with with you physically, uh, mm -hmm. psychologically. When you you're constantly getting on and off airplanes, so um, I, I love holistic approaches. I do a lot. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll fast a lot. Just do a water cleanse. Give the body a time. You know, it'll be spiritual as well as a time for the body to heal itself. Mm -hmm. You you um, you in the medical field, so tell me what you think about the holistic yeah. approach. I mean, I believe in holistic approaches. I mean, I've tried acupuncture and things like that, and I mean, I've gotten a good response from mm -hmm. it, too. I mean, I do think, though, there are certain times when we do need certain medicine conventional. or conventional medicine to kind of help us through whatever we're going mm -hmm. through. But overall, I think holistic approach is good. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, you know, if you are healthy, like I, I had a friend, um, she, she has lupus, mm -hmm. and she... He, like went into remission by just eating a vegan diet mm -hmm. and taking certain herbs mm -hmm. and she was in remission for like decades ate something bad that's another thing like then when you put the bad stuff in it's like you know, yeah, yeah. but it, it worked <clears throat> for her and so now she's doing that all over again and it's a way you can treat your body. I just believe I've been 60 trillion different sizes, right? Because I've done every diet you can think of. I've been on The Biggest Loser. Um, I did 
it, it just all kinds of stuff. And you realize you have to do what works for you. But more importantly, I just believe in treating yourself with respect. Loving yourself. Yeah, you have to. And, and that includes, like, the things you put in your body affect your mind. And that is, you know, the foods we eat, that's really the medicine. Yes. That's really the medicine. The yes. food Come on food. now. You know, so many things we're eating, you know, all the junk we're eating. Because everything's uh, so processed. Processed food. Yeah, they put so know, much in so the stuff. Yeah, so. So we're going to take, uh, I told you, it was a list of questions y'all sent. We're going to take one more because I just got somebody whispering in my ear saying, I might have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I had fact or fiction. Do you believe that we are all created equal? Or is that the political correct thing to say? If so, then why do Asians dominate math and science? Indians from India dominate in the IT space and blacks in sports and entertainment. All these genetic dip are these genetic differences or is it something that society wants us to believe? Let's cover that before we close out. Ooh, that's I, deep. I think it's cultural. Yeah, I think it's cultural. Yeah. I think it's cultural. I think it's, you know, a lot of it has to do with... Um, Nature versus nurture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and then, too, the exposure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think certain cultures expose their kids to different things, and they go on, to, I guess, to have uh, be dominant in that particular area. You, you talk about blacks and sports. We, we, we allow and even encourage and push our kids to, to perform athletically uh, on a regular from even before the days of AAU, we'd go outside and play all day, uh -huh. all night. The streets mm -hmm. light came on, tree Come street on lights now. came on, all that good stuff. Right? Green light, green light. You know, in, in the Asian culture, they that, they're not allowing all that kickball and flying your kites and tackle mail the ball. No, you need you need to be in here working <laughs> on this calculus right. Yeah, right. in kindergarten. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, and you know, in, in the same in same in India, you know, IT and computers would have you. They they have their issues in their native country. They able to flourish with that over here. I think culturally, we focus on different things. You know, yeah. and I think every ethnicity is probably taking something for granted that another ethnicity is good at. Yeah. You know. And, and we have to be responsive to that. You know, we can't really blame anybody for that. Right. Uh, but when I say be responsive to it, what, you know, my question is, what are you going to do different to improve it or make it better? Mm -hmm. Right? You know, because, you know, you, you, our children can be just as good in mathematics as they were child. I believe that they Our are. children yes. can be just as good. Yes. Uh, I'm looking at the math uh, in, in there in my face. You know? Yeah, oh, I yes. Two of my colleagues, one was from Nigeria, the other was from uh, Palestine, and we were just having a conversation about kids and sports because that uh, one of them kids play soccer. Mm -hmm. They were like, when they were kids, their parents wouldn't allow them to play sports. Mm -hmm. They were wow. like, no, you need to go, like Dre said, mm -hmm. you don't go focus on this math or science. Mm -hmm. They thought it was a waste of time. Mm -hmm. They didn't see the importance of it. Of sports. Of sports. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I see the importance. I think it teaches our kids how to be good team Teammate, players. Teammates. Yeah. How to work it's together. Yeah. How to set goals. Mm -hmm. And they can apply that in other aspects of their life. But athletes have a, a drive. A discipline. Yeah. And a discipline yeah. like no other. You yeah. know, like I, my son, I always tell him sports is secondary. It's not first. Mm -hmm. You know, sports is a way for you to get a free college education. But let's not... I'm not telling you want to go to the NFL or wherever you want to go. I'm always down for, okay, speak things as though they were. That's where you're going to go. But I want you to be smart. If you're yeah. going to go to the NFL, be a smart football yeah. player. Right. Be able to look at your, your contracts and be able to work through those things. So the day that dumb second, athlete is done anyway. Yeah, that's yeah. second. That oh, was yeah. education the, the is first. Yeah. Nah, not really. Nah, nah. nah, nah. nah, you think they still don't ask me? Yeah, there's plenty of them. <laughs> no, there's plenty I'm, of them. I'm just saying. But I'm going to tell you what. Not like, like the early 80s. This is a, this a huge topic at, at the barbershop. So you have, uh, because of deficiencies with the with the black fathers of today, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right, not being present, right, we have more mothers uh, trying to raise black sons, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let, let low income or poverty sneak in with that, mm -hmm. right? Wow. So if your son can run fast, jump high, shoot a three-pointer, make a mad crossover, hit a home run, uh -huh. then as a mother who's in poverty with him or her and probably four or five other kids, no, you know what I'm saying? You First thing you're talking about in second grade is he going pro. Mm -hmm. Right, that's your focus because that's the ticket out. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Of the hood. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's right. I'm just saying if there were more of us, 
as fathers present, mm -hmm. right? We could curb that leadership and, and number one, drive manhood first in our young men versus just pure athletics as a way out, but it just as as a as a partnership with the academics. I I got girls, you know, three of my four girls were athletes, right? Yeah. But also three of my four daughters went undergrad on, on academic scholarships. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. So yeah. athletics are just the way for our black children to get scholarships exactly. because Absolutely. they are intelligent children. Yes. They are intelligent JJ, children. JJ, he had a scholarship. It was athletic and mm -hmm. academic. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, this is just my opinion, and y'all can charge it to my head, not to my heart. Society wants us to believe that's all our black kids can but do. So, we do push it. So much more. We do push it, but I'm, telling, I'm looking at the math genius in front of me right now. I'm telling you, my nephew was struggling in algebra, and I don't know what she told him on the phone, although he said she was pretty and it was easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, oh, Miss Courtney. But he got it. It was, And I couldn't do I couldn't teach it to him, but... We have so many smart. When I was when I was at my nephew's graduation, and they had sum cum laude, magnum cum laude, cum laude, and just the the lotties. <laughs> All right. It was so many black Lacky. boys and yeah. girls down yeah. there with the with the little tassels on. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's not that we're not smart. They just don't highlight that in the media. Right. Okay, right. press pause. This this this, Come on. this this another note that we need to take heed of. Number one. Parents have to be involved in who's teaching our children. Oh, right? yes. Right? Oh, yes. Because, you know, like Cody, I love math. I was a math minor. Were you? Know you? Yeah, I mean, it's near major. Mm -hmm. Math minor. Come on, I saw so it. I tutored Cal. I went to Cal. Two was a work study job mm -hmm. at Prairie View. One thing I learned is we had, we had dozens and dozens of kids that were engineering majors hated math. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on, screw. How are you going to be an engineer, but you hate math? Right. The, right. That's the foundation of what yeah, you're trying to get right, into, right? right? What you learn is, is that kids could like math, mm -hmm. but in their upbringing coming up, they have bad math teachers. Exactly. Some teachers only teach one way. The beautiful, the artwork of math is, there's always more than one, one way to solve a problem. Yes, it is. Always. Yes. So if you're a teacher, if, that, if, if, that's your, if that's your discipline, if that's your career, what you do, if a child doesn't get it this way, then you come that way. If they don't right. get it that way, then you come this right. way, or this way, or this yeah. way. Sooner or later, the light switch is going to come on. Yes. I got it, Miss Holman. You know, yeah. I got it, Mr. Dre. The light switch is going to come on, and then that child can absorb the concept moving forward. Because but until you strive to press that button as a teacher, you got to, Now, don't get me wrong. Like, teacher's under pressure right now because right, right, yeah. right. teaching kids today, right. you know, I, I know I can't do it right. because, you know, <laughs> these hands but. fit so well around necks. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't. I couldn't teach. You know, but you gotta I, love. I choke well. You to be a teacher, you gotta love being a teacher. You right. gotta love kids, and a lot of them don't love the kids no more. They just in it for the check. Or they love the kids, but they're so. What I hear from my education friends is that they are they are they are now so constricted by the testing that. and and not being able to use their own creativity come on, and their come on, own. P. Come on, P. They're behind not the, able behind to the, Behind teach. the camera. I, what gonna, you got to, you can't say nothing. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 say this. James had an algebra teacher and she didn't teach the way they wanted her to teach. Right. They fired her. Because she took a different approach to teaching. Mm -hmm. But what they were telling her was the way that you're teaching them is not the way that that's not the it's curriculum. Not the curriculum. Right. Right. So right. 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 you know, either do it our way or, or move around. Or don't do it at all. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she, they fired her. Because yeah. here's the thing I've heard a lot of students say, because you know, a lot of students come behind, they sit in my chair. And it was like, Well, Miss Meany, you know, I learned it different. I got the same answer, but because I didn't tell them how yes. to answer the way they taught me, yes. she failed me. Yes. And I think that's just so wrong. Yes. If you come up with the answer, you come up with the answer. Yes. You know, everybody don't learn the same. Like I told you, I, I didn't realize that I was probably a little ADD. And I was probably a little dyslexic. Didn't mean I wasn't smart. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, um, start teaching these kids how they can receive it. If you want great people, because the child grows into an adult, and that's going to be your leadership. So start teaching these kids however they can get it, let them get it so we can have a better society. Okay, we've had enough of y'all time. Somebody has hit my knee. He got something to go. And I got other questions, but we're going to save that for next month uh, because you asked. And if y'all have any more questions, or anyone, and y'all didn't comment on nothing today. Y'all just 
Was y'all just listening? Yeah, yeah, right. Try. Well, give me the heart of the likes button if y'all had a good time. Hit, hit it real quick. Hit it real quick. But I love you guys so much. I don't know what we talking about next week. I'm gonna look in the book. But um, after that, we gonna talk about um, marriage. How to make marriage work. What to do before you say I do. And then the week after that, we gonna talk about surviving divorce and how to rebuild your life. So um, thank you guys for tuning in. I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. And remember to laugh. Remember to love. Remember to be the light. And always bear good fruit. Come on, baby. I need you closer.